All right, Islam Morris. All meetings are to be opened and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I ask that everyone please rise and face the East for the Moorish American prayer. We always stand up straight with our heels together, feet at a 45 degree angle, holding up two fingers on the right and five fingers on the left. And repeat after me. Allah. 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 Father of the universe. Father of the universe. Father of love. Love. Truth. 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 Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My God. And my salvation. My salvation. And my salvation. By night and by day. Night and by day. Oh. Through his holy prophet. Through his holy prophet. Through holy prophet. Through Ali. 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 Amen. 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 Islam. Islam. Islamism. All right. I want to announce that this meeting of Moore Science Temple of America, Muslim Mission 30, is now open. First and foremost, we always rise and give the highest praise, the highest praise to the Most High, the Creator of the universe, our Father God Allah. We extend honors to our divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali, for bringing us our divine creed and nationality so that we may learn to love instead of hate. We also extend honors to the forerunner to the prophet, our brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey. We give honors to all the eight up sheiks and all the faithful Moors that make up the grand body of the Moorish divine and national movement. We also extend honors to the first appointed Supreme Grand Sheik by the prophet, and that's our brother E. Mealy Ill. And we extend in honors to the current Supreme Grand Sheik, our brother K. Dandrigel. Also honors to the Grand Council of the Moorish Science Temple of America and honors to all the faithful Muslims on this call. Islam, Islam, Islamism. Brother Jackson Bay, would you please read the divine constitution and bylaws? Islam, she, I rise giving perfect praise to Allah, honors to the Prophet Juali, honors to our fathers and our foremothers, honors to the Asiatic nations and the Muslims on the call all over the world. Salvation, Allah, unity, the Moorish Science Temple of America, the Divine Constitution and Bylaws, <clears throat> Act 1. The Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the Moorish Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce law with the assistance of the Prophet and the grand body of the Moorish Science Temple of America. The assistant grand sheik is to assist the grand sheik in all affairs. If he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it is known before the members of the more of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Act two, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on the Friday, the first man was formed in flesh and on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his father, God of life. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Morris Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because a lie is love. Act four, all members must preserve these holy and divine laws and all members must obey the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you are part and partial of the government and must live a life accordingly. Act five, this organization of, of the Moorish Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. Act six, with us, all members must, pro must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they may know that they are part and partial of this said government and know that know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1770 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. 
This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, Abu Juali, the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites whom they had northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become part and partial of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duty of your household. So, sons and daughters must obey. Pardon me. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part. Hold. I'm sorry. Uh, my member. Act 7, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become part and partial of the uplifting act of all uplifting acts at the Moore Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moore Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah, Noble Drew Ali, founder. Moorish American prayer, Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my God, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, through Ali. Amen. The more Science Temple of America, home office of Noble Drew Ali, home office, Chicago, Illinois, USA. Islam, Islam, Islam is unhappy. Muslims. All right, Islamism and gratitude, brother. Gratitude. Um, all right. Okay, Prophet ruins, excuse me, Prophet warns all Muslims to be read in every meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must end all radical speeches while at work in their homes or on the streets. We are for peace and not destruct, destruction. Stop flashing your cards at Europeans, it causes confusion. Remember your card is for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be of severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the, or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the laws laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card or button, cease wearing their turban and fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet Noble Drew Ali. And if the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet, therefore, is sending out the divine plea to all Moorish Americans that they do their part in protecting their temp prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace. Noble Drew Ali, and that's a uh, prophet warns all Muslims. To be proclaimed at every meeting, Islam. I'm glad to know that I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There's a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claim that I was only a joke and unreal. But since now they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens. They're working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so that they may take charge of the situation. I've notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that pay their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moorish movement. 
I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finances so badly as I do at present, so I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without either prophet being head. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the past few years. Prophet Noble Drew Ali. To the members of the Moore Science Temple of America, Islam, this is the instruction from your Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Be faithful unto your forefathers' divine and national creed that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world and his judgment is on now, but the weak can comprehend it not. The end of time is drawing near. So says Allah to his divine prophet, I, Noble Drew Ali. And that is why many hearts have been turned to stone and many have eyes to see, but cannot see, ears to hear, but cannot hear. Least they will be confounded of their sins. These are the trying hours now, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving. And they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your profit. Watch your enemies, dear Moors, your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Islam, Islam, Islamism. Happy Holy Day, Moors. How's everybody doing? Praise Allah. Honest to the Prophet, honest to Allah, Islamism, honest to all you more, happy holy. All is well, Islam. Islam, all right. Um, all I believe uh, Brother Shah Bey and uh, Brother... Uh, Jones Bay had something to share as well. Um, let's see, we peace. I, uh, I know uh, Sheik has just uh, asked if I could read. I'm not sure what. Uh, oh, where yeah. Um, Islam. Yeah, do you have your more studied to book? Islamism. Handy. All right. Um, yeah, once we go into the closing, we just need you to read the divine warning. Islam. All right, Islam. All right, and Sister Lachelle is also going to read the additional laws. Okay, so um, yeah, we're we're actually going to speak on chapter seven today, and then uh, we'll open the floor. I know uh, Brother Jones Bay, and I think Brother Shaw Bay has something to share as well. Um, before we do that, though, if you have a Moorish literature book, please turn to page forty-five. In there, let's go of a masterpiece of religious literature. Page 41. Masterpiece of religious literature, secret of other creeds revealed. All right, Islam, Sister uh, William Zell, working on the shirts. We appreciate you. Masterpiece of Religious Literature, Secrets of Other Creeds Revealed. And this is also by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. The Prophet Noble Drew Ali has spent many hours preparing the latest edition of the Quran, which will be a masterpiece of religious literature. To Americanize the Oriental idea of Islam involves many changes that are more or less negative to the main purpose of the Islamic religion. Such changes are carefully considered with the idea to avoid changing the complexion of the original text. Okay, and why, why would the prophet say that? Right, why would the prophet say that? Um, we often speak about chapter two, verses 30 through 34 in the Quran. Um, let me see if we can pull that up for you.
right. Okay. All right, so yeah, we, we often speak on these stories, or this, uh, these verses. And um, one of the reasons we do is because it's revealed in these verses that the Lord, Allah, created men, you know, men and women, to be his, his, um, his representative on earth and to be lords over the earth, right? He, he, gave, you, he gave us a station in a position, right, to be over all of this, okay? And um, it's in the Quran, you know, this isn't really a good translation right here. Okay, I, I, all right, I see what they're doing. Okay, this looks like there's a breakdown, but um, we have it up here. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read this, the translation. 2.30 says, just think, when your Lord said to the angels, lo, I am about to place a vice regent on earth, they said, will you place on it one who will spread mischief and um, cause bloodshed on, uh, on, excuse me, who will spread mischief and shed blood while we celebrate your glory and extol your holiness. And these are the angels speaking to Allah, right? You know, kind of questioning them like, why would you make your vice regent, what's the vice regent? a person exercising delegated power on behalf of a sovereign or ruler, person regarded as what? An earthly representative of God or, and they got God with the capital G or with the lower case G, especially the Pope, right? And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but the Pope had that title and he recently vacated it. Pope Francis vacated that title last year in April. Okay, so, um, you know, from a Christian perspective, even though most Christians don't know this, they don't even realize they're under Catholicism, but that's their vice regent, the Pope. But in our Quran, okay, and in the Quran of Mecca, as well as our Moorish Quran, it lets us know that's all of our, all of us, that's our title, that's our place. Okay, so this is important to know because, you know, I don't like to say mainstream Islam, but um, the majority of Muslims don't know this. This isn't really being taught. Why? Well, their approach to Islam, for the most part, is very similar to Catholicism in seeing that there's God outside of you, Right? When in reality, if you really read the Quran for your own understanding, you'll see that it's teaching you how to connect to God within, how to subdue your lower nature, not some devil, some shaitan out there outside of you, but how to subdue your own lower nature. Okay? And so that message got distorted. And so... Um, that's, um, the reason I'm saying this is because we're reading this masterpiece of religious um, religious uh, creeds. We're reading the uh, literature from the prophet. And he's saying like there's a conflict in there with Islam, right? So um, the Quran is getting us back, the Moorish Quran, not saying that there's anything wrong with the Quran of Mecca. These are the words of Allah. It's just been distorted by men, right? They're, they're not teaching this. But our short booklet gets right to the point. That's why it opens right up in chapter one with the fall of man, letting you know how you got here, your divine nature. And it also lets you know that you will return to that. Okay, we get our authority from the Quran of Mecca though. So we're not, we're not saying that it's not the word of, of God. We just know that people have distorted it. They're not giving you this empowerment, right? So that's, that's um, verse 30, verse 31 through 34, go, go further into this. Then Allah taught Adam the name of things and presented them to the angels and said, if you are right, that the appointment of a vice regent will cause mischief, then tell me the names of these things. 
they didn't even know the names. So he he gave him, the, you know, man, the station. Now, when you're given the power to, to name things, right, that means you can control your reality, right? That's also why in the Bible, Adam is given the power to name everything, right? He has dominion over it. First off, he has dominion over it. You're naming things. That's what the European did to us. They named us. They nicknamed us. And they have dominion over us, don't they? <laughs> right? It's it's not even, it's not funny. They have dominion over us. So um, the angels didn't know the names of the things, right? Because he gave that power that that that's um man's the lord over um the plane of manifest um verse 32 they say glory to you we have no knowledge except what you taught us you are you are all knowing all wise like we're not saying that any one of us by ourselves is the creator of the universe but we know that Allah planted his seed not even just within us it's within everything. It's within the plants, the animals. It's within all of these creation things and within creation. But the only difference is as man, we have a station as Lord over the manifested world, meaning the physical realm. And in our Moorish Quran, it lets us know also the plane of soul, right? In the soul plane, that's a, that's a um, higher vibratory plane of existence. That's very real, even though we can't perceive of it, right? But it's real. You have a body on that plane that probably resembles this one, but it's not as dense. So we're also lords of that plane as well. Um, going back in here, once again, we're, we're in the Quran, revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Um, peace be upon him. In um, verse 33, then Allah said to Adam, Tell them the names of these things. And when he had told them the names of these things, Allah said, did I not say to you that I know everything about the heavens and the earth, which are beyond your range of knowledge. And I know all that you disclose and also all that you hide. And then in 234 it says, and when we ordered the angels prostrate yourselves before Adam, all of them fell prostrate except Iblis. He refused and glorified, uh, gloried in his arrogance. It became one of the defiers. The, the Right. So the angels even had to prostrate themselves, you know, bow down to man. OK. Once again, a person regarded a vice regent. This is the station that that Allah, Allah gave us a person regarded as an earthly representative of God. Now, it has that, especially the pope, because this is coming from a Christian perspective. All right. And from a Christian perspective, Pope Francis recently vacated that title. We're in the age of Aquarius now. We had a real deal prophet came from amongst our people speaking our language to get us back in alignment, right? With our, our divine nature, our divine instructions to get us back into our covenant with the law. This is all known, even though the common folk don't know this, this is really happening. So the prophet came at the ending, beginning of the new age. We're into the new age. The, the fake vice regent, right? Step down, vacating the title. Why? Because we're supposed to be stepping into who we are, right? And I'm thinking that I was sharing the screen the whole time, and I wasn't. Sorry about that. Okay, so... Um, we see that now in, in the, you know, from a mainstream, I guess you could say mainstream Islamic perspective, that's being left out. And for us, that's a problem. All right. The prophet came and in the beginning of the Quran, that's powerful. That whole fall of man, if, you know, the creation story and then letting you know that Allah is within you and that eventually all of us will realize this doesn't matter how long it takes. All of us are going to re realize this. We're all going to fulfill our higher destiny. But this is all given to you right in the beginning. And then throughout the rest of the chapters, we're given the tools to actually, which we're going to talk about today, chapter seven, but we're given the tools then on how to actually subdue our lower self so that we can actually unfold God within. 
because we don't want to just go around calling each other God. That's not what it's about, right? To actually unfold a lot within. A lot buried himself deep within each and every one of us. And the carnal nature so strong, right? That it took on a life of its own. So much so that most of us don't even hear that still small voice. We don't even know. We, we wouldn't even recognize it. So in the other chapters, after you're given your divine nature, then you're given the 12 step ladder. You're given the 12 virtues, the tools on how to actually bring this out within you, how to unfold a lot within. All right. And that's, that's truly powerful. So let's, let's go into this. Um, all right. And, and no knock to, to our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world is just being honest. You know, the, the perspective, the view that most in the world have is that God exists outside of them, outside of us, right? The devil, shaitan exists outside of us. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's all within. It's all within. Okay? And um, there's no way we can truly come back into our place, right, as vice regents, if we don't even get that concept. And then get the tools and start exercising those tools to to make this reality. Um, Islam, I see you, brother Shaw Bay. Islam, happy holy day, Morris. Uh, I rise and give highest praises to Allah, honors to the Prophet, honors to everyone on the planet, every living being. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to like come back on like the actual words like that stood out just now. Like, uh, pardon me um the the outside like the word outside like you have two different words like you know what i mean just kind of like to break down the the frequency of the actual word you know what i mean outside doesn't mean like all over the place it's just you know more so it's on a different you know side it's like someone side by side you know what i mean that's what's coming out to me and um also within so with that side it's within you you know what i mean it's also in you i don't know if i'm like overthinking or anything but uh, yeah islam i you islam so if if something's outside of us like if god is outside of us then it's possible for you to be alone. But if God is within you, right, Allah's within, you're never alone. You're never on your own. It doesn't matter what you're going through in life, whether it's sickness, whether, you know, you're going through hardship or whatever, you're never alone. And you also always have the keys to your salvation, always within. And that's the message ultimately that's in the Quran. Doesn't matter what's, what scriptures actually it could be the bible it's in there and that's that's um that's something that's empowering for everyone and that message gets lost i guess in the translation and that's why like when you're when you're looking at the masses of people that message is not being taught okay but this was delivered to us right on time coming into the age of aquarius now right we see all of these crazy things happening out here in the world it's right on time and this message came and it delivered the truth to us the true nature and, and and not just telling you but giving us the tools on how to unfold it all right and so that's what the prophet is speaking about in here when he's saying um to americanize the oriental idea of islam involves many changes that are more or less negative to the main purpose of the islamic religion such changes are carefully considered with the idea to avoid changing the complexion of the original text. So he wants to give you the true message. Like we're re that's why um, in our Quran in our um, Quran questions, it says we're returning to the old time religion. Islamism is the old time religion. So we're coming back to the root. So that there's no way people can twist it and distort it this time. That's also why the book needs to be short and to the point. So nobody can come through and distort it now, right? We're not trying to put up another Pope to say, oh, this is the vice regent of, of Allah, right? No, no, you are, each and every one of us. 
okay? And then we can go to the Quran and find it. We can even go to the Bible and find where it says that. Even though they're distorting it and they're giving you a man, just one person is that. But we can find that in the Bible as well. Okay, so they pulled the wolves over, over the people's eyes. The philosophy of the ancient prophets is the main initiative in the comp compilation of the Quran. All right, why would that be the philosophy of the ancient prophets? Because they are all bringing that same message. They're all ultimately, you know, they're, they're trying to help whatever, whoever their people are to get back in alignment with, with Allah, but they're all bringing the same message, which is ultimately to realize, recognize your connection to divinity, that Allah is within you, right? That you are the cause also of, 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 of your own um, blessings or, or um, things that are working against you as well, right? There's no Satan out there. It's all within. And so they all had that same message. No thoughts or pro of propaganda into this work, as has been the case of many former religious works, such as the Bible and other books of creed, which we know with the compilation of the Bible, um, the scriptures are great but they left out certain things, right? When they formed the council of Nicaea, we're gonna put this in there, we're gonna leave this out, okay? The sole purpose of the prophet, we also know that they did that, unfortunately with the Quran as well, um, the third caliph after the prophet Muhammad, they, they took all the scriptures back, they burned them. And then they put, they left what um, books in the Quran that they felt were most appropriate and then they redistributed it. <clears throat> the sole purpose of the prophet in giving such a message to the world is to save fallen humanity. When a compiler attempts to inject propaganda into a work of this kind, there arises a need to cover the true text in order to prevent a clash with the truth and ideas involved in such propaganda. Former works of this kind have either hindered or helped the nations proportionately to the adherence to the truth as to the original purpose of keeping the ignorant in such a state. It is hard to, so you couldn't <clears throat> have a Pope, right? If you're letting them know that all of us are the vice regents of God, right? Why, why is this one person being set up there? It is hard to resist the temptation to use this medium for gain. Hence, many of the former treaties on works of this kind have been the means to foster ideas of the unscrupulous wherein they desire to use religious influence for gain. The many secrets known to the prophet that could be used for the salvation of the nation were either left out or colored to an extent that their meaning was made void. Such is not the case with this edition of the Quran. All the secrets of the ages known to man are put into this work. And that's how come it opens right up with how we all came into being, not just us, but the plant, the animal kingdom, everything, how we all came into being, how we exist on other planes um, that lies within and how to get back to that status, right? We couldn't leave it out. Um, all the secrets of the ages known to man are put into this work. The secrets known only to the Magi are here revealed the reading of the stars, the interpretation of marriage relations, the understanding of the span of life, and others such as has been kept from the Occidental world are in this book bro boldly brought out. The Quran, Americanized as it can will be, can be bought in a few weeks. It will be sent to our governors of the Morris Science Temple of America, and that's by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Um, but for the most part, right? We're, we're being given the truth, the raw truth, um, the message for us personally that we need to get back into our divine covenant and then the higher message, right? Connecting to the higher self, which is what we'll, we'll talk today, about today in chapter seven. And um, that's also why we have things in our Quran, like when the prophet is talking about how we have to give the church back to, um, to the Europeans, right? We're giving it back. Um, why would the prophet say that, right? We're, we're not, we don't speak radical. We don't talk ill, you know, about, um, about the church or any other organization. 
right? So why does the prophet say we're returning the church and Christianity back to the European nations? He's given us the he's given us divine wisdom as it was prepared by their forefathers for their earthly salvation. Right? While we the Moorish Americans are returning to Islam, which was founded by our forefathers for our earthly and divine salvation. And then we're given the divine covenant, which um, if you saw that little clip from they, that them, the show, where the, the preacher in there mentions that, that our people suffer because we broke our covenant with, with God, but he's not going to tell you what the covenant is. It tells you right here, the covenant of the great God of law, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be longer upon the earth land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And we know that all of these are divine instructions. Each and every last one of these pages in the Quran contains divine instructions. And this is important because if we don't know this, we don't have this knowledge, we could get caught up out here. There was um, a lady who wasn't just a lady. She wasn't just a nobody. She was a minister. And she actually got up in front of an entire church and said she thanks God for slavery, right? I thank God for slavery. I thank God for the crack house. If it wasn't for the crack house, come on somebody, God wouldn't have never been able to use me how he can use me now. And if it wasn't for slavery, I might be somewhere in Africa worshiping a tree. Right, and so, you know, we, we see stuff like this and this, I, I'm, personally, that's why I never really liked church, even as a child when I, I didn't even really understand why I just didn't like it really until I, I got older and started to understand it didn't make sense that we're still practicing something that was forced on us. But, you know, this is why this happens, right? That mindset, she's not the only one with that mindset. And that lady, not really to focus on her, but I'm saying once again, this wasn't just uh, nobody saying this she's a rich she's a preacher she's a minister right and was in the house of representatives in florida okay and so this is what this is the mentality and the sickness that people have whether they're whether they're bold enough to speak on it or not right this is what it fosters and so we had to get out of that we had to <laughs> we had to get out of that and so we we have to just give it back this is why we're just told to just give it up cold turkey give it back to the european give it back it, it's not going to work for us right um so on that level you know from an earthly perspective that's why we're returning christianity back to the europeans and then we're returning to islamism and in doing this we're coming into our divine covenant and then we're returning to something that's ancient. Um, I've showed this a lot of times, but let me show this again, right? This is what we're returning to. This is why a prophet also um, on his business cards, he said he's an Egyptian adept. This is the mindset we're returning to, right? Because our ancestors carved it in gold, in stone, subduing the lower self everything it was even they even built entire buildings you know and monuments like the um the sphinx and it's a giant representative of the higher and lower self and mastery over the lower self right with the head of man or head of a woman body of a beast mastery of the lower self that's what the all of the ancient cultures were about and so this is what we're returning to. And that's why it says we're in our Quran questions for anyone is wondering. That's why it says we're returning to the old time religion. All of the statues, even the ones carved out of stone and even entire buildings. There's an entire temple in Karnak in Egypt called the Temple of Man. And it's all about subduing the lower self. Why? because you must raise to Christ consciousness. And you can't do that if you're stuck in your carnal desires. If you're a slave to your passions and carnal desires, that we don't even really know the power that we have. The Egyptians didn't even know that they only had a portion of the wisdom and understanding. 
and they were able to do incredible things, right? And so we're trying to get back to that. And so they carved it so that it wouldn't be forgotten. And that's what the prophet returned us to. That's why we can't overlook it. All right. And um, let's go ahead and go in here into chapter seven. And uh, we're not going to read the whole chapter today. I'm just going to focus on the last couple of verses for now. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and read the whole thing uh, next. Islam, Grand Islam. Chief. Islam. Uh, Sister Adams Bay, could you tell me, I, uh, there's two things I want to add. Where were you reading in the Quran of Mecca? I want to write it down because I want to read it. I never get, I couldn't find it. All right. Just, it's uh, chapter two, verses 30 <laughs> through 34. 30 through 34. And let me just ask one more question. I, I know this happened before. Um, on our Morris literature, the one that I have only have 21 pages in it. And I think you have one that has more pages. Okay, yeah, I can send you a PDF of it. But if you want to purchase one, we don't have any. So um, I, I can actually, you could just get it from Texas. The, the temple in Texas, they should have it. They, they okay, because we got it from. I can say I can I, I can cash up you some money to get me some books that I need if you have them that that we should have then I mm -hmm. can purchase them from 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 our study group from you. All right, um, brother, I'm sorry, I'm mean to cut you off, brother Lewis L. Do you do you have any of those Morris literature books? Islam, um, I have one. But um, I can get in contact with uh, one of the brothers and see, because I believe uh, they have an inventory of them. Okay, Islam. So that's that's the best um, option to do then. I mean, we, we'll put in an order too, but it, it's best if you just um, contact Brother Lewis L, Sister Moore L on the side, Sister. Brother Lewis. Yeah, because the books are being L. published there in Texas, so you can get them. Okay. I will. Brother Lewis L., you heard it, right? <laughs> Islam, sister. Islam. Okay, because I, I will send you the, the money today. You let me know where I have if your cash app or whatever, please. Islam. Okay. Islam, I'll, but I'll, yeah, I can I can send you the PDF and the email, but yeah, get that hard copy you. from from the temple down there in Texas. Shakran Granchi. All right. Islam. All right, Grand Islam, Seek, I, got my, I, I got my book, my uh, metaphysical Bible dictionary. I'm so right. happy I got it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, now that really helps out. Just, it sure um, does. just, you know, applying to the Bible, but also to the Quran, to any scriptures. Yes, it does. Islam. All right. I see you, Brother Shah Bey. Islam, um, honest to the prophet for um, bringing us back to <clears throat> our ancient divine principles because I did some research years ago and it, yeah, it was with some other moors in California and they introduced me to the library, law library of Congress. And I, you know, did some more research and printed up Egyptian law. So would that have any connection with how we do law in America today? Or is that something that we can just refer to? Islam. How you? Islam, what what do you mean by Egyptian law? Like in the um the present present Egypt or in the past or Islam, yeah, it's present as well. Um but uh, I mean if you if you don't mind to if if I share, um, just like a background introduction. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Islam. Islam is, all right. <clears throat> so this is from the Library of Congress, Law Library of Congress, uh, Legal Research Guide, Egypt. Um, it's following the le legislative process, court systems, web resource, or uh, official sources of law, 
and introduction stands historic background. The Egyptian legal system was founded on an, on the Napoleon, excuse me, Napoleonic Napoleonic codes, Roman law, and Islamic Sharia. In 1874, Egypt gained independence from the Ottoman Empire in matters of legal and administrative regulation. In the following year, a national legal system was established in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Jurists and scholars such as the Grand Mufti criminal, or excuse me, Grand Mufti Muhammad Abdullah Rashid Rida and Abdullah Razak Razayak El Al Sanuri adopted the European way of legal thinking in commercial, criminal, civil, and maritime matters, but family law remained under the supervision of Islamic courts. El Mahakim El Sharia used to educate family matters until 1956 when these courts were integrated into the national court system. In cases of marital disputes involving non-Muslim church sub substan substantive uh, law applies. And it reads, continued, um, the Egyptian constitution in 1971 declared the judiciary branches independence and auton autonomy from the executive branch. Furthermore, the Supreme Constitutional Court established in 1969 is responsible for enforcing compliance of laws with the provisions of the Constitution. Islam, are you? Islam, and you're just asking like if that if that had anything to do with us, like or we could apply that. Correct. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was because he said you, you said or uh, uh, you know Noble Noble Drali referred to himself as an Egyptian aid that so him being just like us you know just moving in life you know he had to discover some type of law so that he can write his own constitution you know bring us back to our constitutional fold and and be part and parcel and that's that leads also back to my question earlier but we can get to that later but yeah you know what what was his what was the significance of himself calling egyptian okay. calling his Egyptian aid. I got you. Okay, so um, for the most part, like him being an Egy Egyptian adept, he's returning us to an ancient way of thought. Like you see this book, Stolen Legacy, uh, George G.M. James, for the most part in that book, he's talking about ancient Egyptian culture and even showing how it's a worldwide culture, right? And so this is who we are. And the prophets returning to us to that. And so we can't just say, oh, we're the ancient Egyptians. No, there's more to it than that. Um, we have a government, we have a, a religion. And not only that, but we have to resemble that. We have the because um the Egyptians, the the adepts were about mastering their lower self. Right? And that's that's why I was showing those statues. So the prophet with the with our Quran, with our constitution, all of these things are based off of that principle of lowering the high, the uh I'm subduing the lower self, of rising the Christ within, and of doing this on a personal level, and then doing this within our communities, within our nation. So that it's not just talk, so that we actually are who we say we are. Okay, so it um, doesn't really have anything to do with modern day Egypt with how they govern themselves. Their constitution is based off of the, the US constitution. Most, most nations in the world's constitution is similar to, to ours here, right? But this is what the prophet returned us the to. The with the cradle of civilization, the priests exercising their divine prerogative made the laws and enforced them, appointed the rulers and controlled them, ministered to the needs of the living and guided the destinies of the dead. All branches of learning were monopolized by the priesthood who admitted into their ranks only those intellectually and morally qualified to perpetuate their arcana. The following quotation from Plato's statesman- And that is what the subject. prophet returned to us. So the prophet returned us to, like it says, the government of ancient Egypt was theocratic. It was being ran by priests. 
So we didn't separate yes, church and no. state. We didn't do that. The the Paheru, the Pharaoh, was um he's connected to God on earth. That's why a lot of times when you see statues of the Pharaoh, he's got Horus the hawk on his shoulders, and you'll see the wings maybe of Horus coming over his shoulders, is because he's in alignment with his higher self. And so this is what the prophet returned us. So on an individual level, so that we can be in alignment with our higher selves and our government is based off of that as well, how we govern ourselves. And so that's something that we don't see anybody on earth doing. When we pull it off, when we do it, we will be leading the way. That's our destiny to be at the head of this. All right. And so that's what the prophet returned us to an ancient mindset, an ancient way of, of, um, of living, governing ourselves. Is not, does that make sense? Did I, did I answer that? Islam, yeah, it, it definitely uh, Islam. 360 because uh, what I read was kind of reflecting, you know, how, like you said, uh, Egypt and how they do law with, with the U.S. And it's basically all connected, you know, tied into Rome, Roman law, just like, I, just like it was read. So now I can, you know, understand that uh, perspective more so and not just kind of but but i also had a had a weird you know analogy or a weird connection to it as well um because we're part and parcel that means a portion like i was saying in the in the in the uh, chat and i just want to make sure what exactly are we parcel to as long All right, Islam. So um, you could take that two ways. Um, you could say that we're partial to this government, the United States of America. Like it's, it's just common sense that we shouldn't be out here like being radical, um, acting like we're trying to subvert the government or that we're against it. That would make us targets for no reason. Right. right. No, that's, no. that's just common sense. But then also we're partial to our own government. Like if there's something that they want us to do that they're trying to get everyone to do that is against Islamism, it's against our principles, it's against our government, then that's when we have to say, okay, I can't take part in this because we're partial to that. Right. Where the next Asiatic person might not even care because they don't even have these divine principles. They're not even trying to, you know, they don't understand, but you, you're a Moorish American Muslim and you're not, you're not just down for whatever. Right, you're like, I can't take part in that. And so in that case, you're partial to your own government. You know, for the most part, it you know, it doesn't conflict. There's there's not really any confliction. But you know, if that does happen, like for example, just for example, say you have a problem with the vaccines, taking the vaccine, right? You could from our perspective say that that's that's against our wishes and desires. Like that goes against our, our way of living, right? I'm not taking part in this. That's against my religion, right? And then there's other ways that that, that would um, come into play too, where you'll be partial to your government. And then there's nothing anyone can do to like force you to take part in it. It's going against your religion, your way of life. All right. Islam, the tongue is mightier than the sword. Islam. And so the prophet was an ancient, uh, he was an Egyptian adept because he had the adept mindset, the way of thinking and understanding, right? Um, not knocking Europeans or anyone else, but they can't be us. They can't. They're concealers. They feel like they have to conceal this maybe in order to rule over us, right? You see the prophet's hands revealed. He doesn't have to put it into his coat pocket or in his shirt pocket. We don't have to do that. There's some of us who do this. And it's like, you, you don't have to do that, right? But we, we truly don't. It's more American Muslims. We don't. We, we bring, we're, we're returning the light. 
we're, we're sharing the knowledge, the true information. And so the Quran doesn't have to, like it can be a short booklet, you know, with 65 or 66 pages of, you know, it can be short and to the point. It doesn't have to be long and it doesn't have to um, dance around the fact of who we truly are. Right, it doesn't have to hide the power that you have to control your own reality because we want the we want you to go through these middlemen to think that you have to, you know, there was a point in time in Europe where they were telling people that they had to pay money to the church so that their ancestors wouldn't be getting tortured in hell. I'm not making that up. They even they taught that to us in, in high school, I think. But that's that's like basic um, history, right? And so we don't we're not coming to do that. We're we're kicking over the the door, kicking over the tables, you know, like Jesus did when he came up in the temples and they're in there um, making money, counting up all their money. He came and he started kicking the tables over, kicking the money out the way, you know, shaking things up. Like we we don't have to play that game, right? Because we're we're above that, we're beyond that. All right, and so that's what we're returning to, something greater than that. And, um, you know, ultimately, that's that's what's going on here. Okay, and um, we will read the whole chapter. We'll go over the rest of chapter seven today, but I just want to touch on a few things in here. Right. So, um, just in here in verse three, Jesus said, truth is the only thing that changes not. In all the world, there are two things. One is truth, the other is falsehood, and falsehood that which seems to be, right? Um, we're also told that man is truth and falsehood strangely mixed, right? Falsehood is everything which will pass away. The, the, the physical world, the spirit realm is the unseen. And it's easy to think that it's not even real because it's unseen, but that's what's real. That's the only thing that's real. That's truth. And Allah in man is the spirit, the spirit man, right? So that's why we're truth and falsehood is strangely mixed. And um, this understanding is being returned to us, right? And um, instead of just telling us about this, we're given tools. Like I'm going to fast forward all the way down here to the... Um, end of chapter seven, right? Verse 26 through 31. And Jesus said, faith is the surety of the omnipotence of Allah and man, the certainty that man will reach the deific life, right? So he's, 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 um, he's beginning to give you understanding of your connection to, to, to Allah and then how to, to do this, right? We're given tools. And this is important because when you're looking in that metaphysical Bible dictionary and you look at the meaning of seven in scripture, um, seven means oneness with God. Okay, so we're being given tools here. That's gonna let you know that in that seven chapter, you're gonna be given tools on how to realize oneness with God. And Jesus said, Faith is the surety of the omnipotence of Allah and man, the certainty that man will reach the deific life. So it's not saying, you know, you, you, God, right? we're not looking at it like from that perspective and definitely not supposed to be walking around worshiping yourself or other people, right? We just understanding Allah is so incomprehensible that Allah is inside of everything and Allah is in you. And that we have a station in here as well where we actually have control over this because Allah made us vice regents over, over this. He made us lords, as it says in, in our Holy Quran of the More Science Temple of America, lords of the plane of manifest and of the soul, right? So um, on here, it says, faith is the surety of the omnipotence of Allah and man, the certainty that man will reach the day of life, the certainty. It's, it's a sure thing. It's going to happen for each and every one of us. Salvation is a ladder reaching from the heart of man to the heart of Allah. All right. And they tell, and we're told that uh, the closest place where we can meet Allah is in the heart, right? Within. All right. So salvation is the ladder. There's a 12 step ladder, 12 virtues that you need to master 
so that you can unfold Allah within you. So we can't skip over this. It has three steps. Belief is first. This is what man thinks maybe is true. Perhaps it's true. Faith is next. And this is what man knows to be true. Truth. Fruition is the last. And this is man himself, the truth. Belief is lost in faith. And in fruition is lost. And then man is saved when he has reached deific life. And when he and Allah are one. All right. So what is this about? So he's... um. <clears throat> He's given us steps to unfold a lot within, right? So that you can build the temple of perfected man. The 12 steps on the ladder are the 12 virtues. All right. And then the virtues are discussed more in detail in each of the chapters. But okay, so we have the 12 virtues. And to attain each virtue, you must... Um, you must follow these steps. You're given three simple steps. And it's simple, but simple doesn't always mean it is easy to do, to actually do it. But the three steps, and then what are they? Belief, faith, and fruition. And every virtue that you attain, you further subdue the lower self until you finally unfold it a lot within, right? Reaching deific life. OK, and so um, we're given these steps so that we can actually do this in the here and the now and then to finally to base our society off of this. Right. But it has three steps. Belief is first. And this is when man thinks perhaps something is true. Faith is next. This is when man knows it's true and fruition is last is when you're living it. Right. So obedience. When you. Teach him obedience and he shall bless thee. So with each virtue, you know, it starts with belief, believing, believing in it that, that you can attain it. Right? Maybe even just going over that chapter on obedience and working to obtain that virtue. Belief, faith, and fruition. Okay. And remember, every time we work on these virtues, we further subduing the lower self. And when you attain one. That's one more step, right? That you're climbing up this ladder. And so this is like, you know, something symbolically that we can see, right? But this is something that we actually can do within ourselves, all right? To empower ourselves further. And this is something that every last one of us can do that, you know, even our children can do. So we're given practical steps on how to unfold a law within. And it's not some spooky stuff, you know, make believe this is real. Remember, we're showing this is why the Egyptians carved this stuff out of stone. Right. It was so important. You can't forget about it. It's on stone. Entire buildings are made to show this. Right. It's all about this. And so when the prophet returned this mindset back to us and then gave us the steps on how to do it we have to follow through, right? We have to take this seriously, right? So, it, you know, because some of us, like, I mean, you know, people get into the, especially ancient Egyptian culture. Some people even play dress up, you know, dress like the ancient Egyptians. And it's like, hey, that's fun, I guess, you know, on Halloween, but you're not actually practicing the steps. You're not about lowering, I mean, um, subduing the lower self. If you really want to do that, then it doesn't matter what you're dressed like. Right, <laughs> because that's what it's really about. It's about subduing the lower self. You don't have to have on Egyptian costume or any of that stuff. Okay, this is what it's really about. This is the meat of it. This is the stuff that some people might think is boring or just wouldn't be up to it, right? And then these 12 steps, those are also the 12 um, zodiacs. All of this stuff is tied into us because as above, so below. All right. Um, we can go back in in chapter seven next next Friday, but I'm just going to close out on that. Does anybody have any questions or any anything they would like to share? All right. But we'll remember that, though. Chapter seven and, and seven um, is letting you know, like um, from a metaphysical perspective, seven is letting you know about the oneness of God. 
you're going to get instructions on how to to be at one with God, with Allah. All right. And we have those steps. And in there, we're given the ways to attain each virtue. You obtain each virtue through uh, belief, faith, and then fruition. Fruition is when you're living it, when you're walking it. You're not just walking around saying that you practice sincerity or benevolence. You're living it. Belief, faith, and fruition. And that's it. Simple. Might not be easy to do, but it's simple. All right. Islam. So um, yeah, on, on that note, let's go ahead and, and go into the closing of the meeting. Um, I know uh brother, um, before we before we read the laws, um, I know uh brother Cremus uh Jones Bay has something to share. Okay. Um, Islam, she kind of let me let me. Um, Give me the drive. Okay, I gotta drive. Drive. All right, okay. Islam, we we can. Okay. Um, All right, bye. Love you. Yeah, we can come back to you. It's okay. We'll we'll just come back to you. Um, okay. Sister, yeah, we'll come back to you in a minute. Uh, Sister Lachelle, L, would you please read the additional laws? Islam. Questionnaire and additional laws for the Moorish Americans by Prophet Noble Juali, Act One, Grand Sheiks and Governors and Head of All Temples, All Business. Each said temple must be approved by the Prophet Noble Juali before acting upon by any member, let it be finance, property, or any line of life that will cause the members to sacrifice finance, etc., that will cause the support, the support of any group of members. Any former officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from its office under a heavy restriction, etc. by the Prophet or the Grand Sheik Act 2. All members are to attend their ADEP meetings and their public meetings promptly. If a member is found standing around on their meeting period, shall be fined 50 cents on the first case. And on the second, he will be fined $1, which will go on your emergency funds. If member who is working, his monthly dues must be paid. And if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe for as much as he is able to, to the Moorish Uplifting Fund, because it takes finance to uplift the nation. Act three. It is the lawful and divine duty of every good member if he is able in finance to aid me in saving the nation. And if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people and justice must catch you. Let it be he or she according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice as I have the power invested in my hands and I will have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. Act four, all members while up making a public speech must not use any assertion against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organized group because we are to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Act five, all members must promptly attend their meetings and send their children to Sunday school and the teacher must confirm himself to the questionnaire and let every member exercise his five senses who is able to do so because out of your Sunday school comes the guidance of the nation. Act six, with us all members must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are a part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, color folks, black people or Ethiopians because these names were given to slave by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But it is, this is a new era of time now and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe ordained noble Drew Ali, the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the Northwestern and Southwestern shores of Africa. Act seven, all members must promptly attend their meetings 
and become a part and a partial of all uplifting acts of the Moore Science Temple. Members must pay their dues and keep in mind with all necessities of the Moore Science Temple. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey their father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, noble Juali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah, Islam. All right, Islam and gratitude, sister. Uh, Brother Shah Bey, would you please read the divine warning? Islam. Happy Holy Day, Muslims. A divine warning by the prophet for the nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, are all one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and the principles that delude to slavery. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God of law to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to that state of mind, to their forefathers divine and national principles, that they will be law abiders and receive their divine right as citizens, according to their free national constitution, that was prepared for all free national beings. They are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth, and it comes only through the connection of the more divine national movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, and through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by the other citizens that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege as has been the existing condition for many generations. You who doubt whether I, the prophet and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know law in the city hall and among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply. For they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into light. Money doesn't make the man. It is free national standards and power that makes a man in a nation. The wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce belongs to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I am hereby calling on all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. <laughs> help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of the government. I am depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fold again, that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. I, live, I love my people and I desire their unity and mind back to their own free national and divine standards because day by day, they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, it is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised there and asks for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, 
he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fails to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principle, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Because they placed their first, <clears throat> excuse me, because they placed their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. The word Negro deludes in, in the Latin language to the word nigger, the same as the word color deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. And even nation, and every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers because honoring thy fathers and mothers, your days will be lengthened upon this earth. These names have never <clears throat> have never been recognized by any true American citizens of this day. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by said national government in which they live. The 14th and 15th Amendment, 15th Amendments brought the North and South in unit, placing the Southerners who were at the time without power, at that time without power, with the constitutional body of power. And at that time, 1865, the free national constitutional law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And if all men are declared by the free national constitution to be free and equal, since that constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th Amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens. <clears throat> so there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which has which was lost, and that is through the above statements. Then the lion and the lamb can live, lie down together in yonder hills. And neither will be harmed because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning in this land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people. And this great sin, must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, diseases, etc. And I, the prophet, do herein believe that this administration of the government being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens at, that believe in their free national constitution and laws and through the help of such classes of citizens. I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of men that have never done them any good, but have always harmed them. So I, the prophet, am hereby calling all aloud with a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been committed and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America, because they know it is not true and divine and it's not the true and divine way, and without understanding, they have fallen from the true light into utter darkness of sin. And there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically as so in their present condition of their endeavorment, in which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world. They will not refrain from their simple ways of action. And their deeds have brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they fought the Southerner for all these great mis misuses. But I have traveled in the South and I have examined conditions there. And it, it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives in life. And I am hereby calling on all true American citizens for more support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of the darkness into marvelous light from the prophet. Islam, Islam, Islamism. All right, Islamism and gratitude, brother, uh, brother Jones Bay. Are are you ready? I think you have something to uh, share. Yeah, I'm ready. Did you need the screen? Yeah, I got you. 
Yeah, I'll just finish it. All right. All right, you got it. All right. Y'all see? Hold on one second. I may just read it because it's all right, y'all. That's it. It's loud. Uh, yeah, it's showing. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Um, this is basically um, we um, the, the security portion of the boards. We're gonna. This pertains to those who are going to uh, Magic Mountain this um, Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, those who are going to Magic Mountain this Sunday, we um, we just wrote up a, um, a security mandate, and there's some few things that we wanted to implement immediately and um, some things that we wanted to make clear to the members that are going. So those that are going, you know, if not, you know, that's cool, but still take it account because you may go to future events and this stuff is uh, it's pretty much going to be uh, the template on how, you know, things are going to go. But I wanted to, let me see, I'm going to just go over this part the part that's pertaining to the members. Um, let me see. In case of an unknown, okay, real quick. First of all, when we get there, um, we're going to be in the parking lot. Let me say this first. Yeah, we're going to be in the parking lot. We're going to meet in the parking lot, and we're going to have a, a small briefing when we get there, I think around 1.30, 1.30 or so. Um, I know everybody may not be on time, so we'll wait a few minutes for stragglers. But... Um, we're going to be there to um, let everybody know where the emergency exits are, where the fire exits are. Um, we're going to have a, a central meeting place um, when we get there, just in case any type of emergency happens. And everybody will know exactly where to go, you know, um, if something happens or whatnot. So uh, let me see. All right. We just, I'm going to go through this. And if it has to do with the officers, then I'm going to skip it. Um, unknown emergency. In case of an unknown emergency, this is for everybody who's gone or whatnot. Um, look, you're gonna first thing you should do is look for a maroon turban. Um, if a maroon turban is not present, because a maroon turban that's gonna be um part of the security. One of one of us brothers, whether it's me, brother uh Seymour Bay, or um I think brother Kevin is um also going. Uh, if a maroon turban is not present quickly go to the established base for accountability so just if you don't see anybody around if there's an emergency um just go straight to where we said you know this is the designated area to go to in case of an emergency um, remain calm as the security personnel escort all members out of the facility that's just in case of an unknown emergency for fire emergency fire exits routes are uh, they're already going to be established so everybody's going to know um especially the parents if a fire alarm is sound Look for a maroon turban. If maroon turban is not present, proceed in a calm fashion to the nearest fire exit. Um, blah, blah, blah. This, and the rest of that is for the security officers. So that's all you have to do on that one. I'm going to go quick because I know everybody's shot for time. Um, child abduction. This is the most important one, I feel, because we're going to be um, crowded area, a lot of people, chaos, uh, games, and, um, you know, different areas. So, uh, it's the first note, no child should be alone at any time. That's one of the main things. Uh, the buddy or group system should be implemented to lower the risk of abduction. Everybody, whether you go into the restroom, everybody should have somebody with them. No child should be by themselves at all. Because this is, you know, it's a, more of a uh, child-friendly place. If you're not a child, then, you know, you're good. You're good to go. You don't need nobody. But for the children, um, nobody should be alone. And um, another thing, like, talk to your children to make sure if something does happen, they know what to do. They know the protocol. Um, one of the things that I was looking up and that I saw when a child, if you, 
you teach a child if they get abducted, make a lot of noise, whether they're at the store, whether they're in the library, whether wherever, make a lot of noise and act crazy, act chaotic, and draw a lot of attention to them. So, you know, that'll draw a lot of attention to them. That'll put the spotlight on the person whoever's trying to abduct them. And um, yeah, that's one of the methods, but talk to your children, give them protocol. You can, you know, look some of this stuff up. And let me go through this every 30 minutes to an hour. That's for the security. If a child is abducted, a code will be announced over the intercom between the security officers. Every member will um, have to quickly report to base and anybody in their cipher, they'll have to uh, report to base with them for a thorough head count. The head count will identify who's missing, if not already known at the time of the child abduction officer. Okay, that's stuff for the officer. So basically, they're going, there's going to be a code and we'll tell everybody to basically go to the base. Hey, go to the base, and the officers will take care of the rest from there. Um, if any injuries occur, the most certified officer first aid will address the situation, while other ones call nine one one. And I think that was yeah, that was basically the gist. We want everybody to have fun and be safe. We want everybody to be, um, you know, on alert. There's, you know, there's always predators on the mess, but we also want y'all to know that there will be personnel, you know, on standby looking and making sure everybody is safe. But we want everybody to do their part in, you know, being safe by just implementing these small little things and so everybody can have fun. And that that was about it. I yield the floor. All right, Islam and gratitude. Gratitude. We can't stress enough the importance of security. Like, no, um, you can't ha have a community, right, without having security and taking yourself seriously. So I want to extend honors to you, Brother Jones Bay, Brother Seymour Bay, uh, Brother La Bay, I mean La L, and um, just uh, Brother Forster L. We appreciate y'all. Islam, right. Sheik. Islam. If, I, if I may, just for a moment, um, First, I want to rise, giving the highest praise to our Father God, Allah, and honors to His Holy Prophet, Noble Drawley. Honors to all you faithfuls on the call. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Brother Cremus Jones, our training officer, who put in the extra time to come up with the template that we will use moving forward. Um, we're going to modify for the type of event that we're having, but he put together a specialized program for this weekend. Then we'll begin with the safety briefing before we go into the facility. Um, again, the staff is Brother Cremus Jones, Brother Lot L, Brother Forrester L, and myself. And although this is the first organized security executed plan, you've been covered every time we've gotten together. You just didn't know about it. But um, things are forming up now, and we're growing, and we're moving, and we're preparing and we got a good staff looking out for you. Peace. Peace to the Uma. Islam. Islam. Islam, I think uh brother Shaw Bay, you have your hand raised. Islam, I just wanted to ask uh, about tickets and whatnot. I still have an uh group pre registered for the ticket if that is uh that is an issue. What tickets are you talking about? This is for the the zombie the zombie um, uh, event. Um, you know what? No, this Magic Mountain. Yeah, we're going to yeah, just Magic Mountain in, in Columbus. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. But you know what? Um, the zombie thing that 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 laser tag thing. Um, I send you the link to the website. You have to go in there and get them your email. Because what they do is, and I think they're going to do it this weekend, the tickets go on sale for the event. The event's not until July or June, but they sell out the same day. It's so if you it's don't long, do it, you have, to be, you have to get the tickets within an hour. And it's going to be sold out. But they I have got you. It's been a, military it's, grade it's been weapons, long. but they're outfitted like, you know, for laser tag and, um, you know, they have like tactical events, like you know, people going to be dressed up like zombies, but you know, you're moving through the complex and they have all this stuff going on. So, I mean, I, I can send the link. Yeah, to fun training exercise. But we, we have to move fast to get the tickets. 
They're thirty nine dollars. Islam. All right, Islam, we'll do. Gratitude, Steve. Yeah, you just have to go in there and, and sign up. Give them your email so they can let you know when they go on sale. All right. Okay, so um, unless somebody else has something to, to share, we're going to go ahead and close out. All right, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Please rise and face the east for the closing prayer. Right, Allah, bind our hearts and minds back to our ancient forefathers' divine creed and principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohim. Amen. Islam, Islam, Islamism. This meeting is now adjourned. Happy Holy Day, Morris. Happy Holy Day. 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 Islam, Muslims. Happy Holy Day. Happy Holy Day, Morris. Islam, Islamism, Islam. Mm. Islam. Um, this is brother. This is brother Mumin. Hey, I, I was trying to get with you about the uh, question about affairs. Um, are they supposed to be red or maroon? Yeah, um, I'm not really clear on that. I mean, honestly, I see the Moorish Americans wearing both, either red or, or maroon, maroon. Mine is dark red, like maroon. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, okay. you ready to get how you can get it? Where to can get you it? tell me how to order one? Yeah, I got mine from Lauderer. From Lauderer? Is that, is that what you just said? I'm, yeah, I'm trying to find out where can I order Okay, no, I'll, 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 I'll hang on. I'm gonna get the link right now and put it in the chat. Can you um when I put it in there, can you say that link so that you can go check it out later? Yes, sir. Yes, All right. All right. Okay, that, there's the link. Um, yes. Yeah. All right. And uh, for everyone that's on the call too, um, if you want to go into business with us this year, we're gonna we're gonna be investing in our own fezzes. Yes, so we Grand already Chief. found it. So I am manufacturer. With it. So. Yes, Grand Sheik. Let me know what you need. I'm with that. Okay, Islam. Thank you, Grand Sheik. Shakran. All right, gratitude. Grand Sheik, I yeah. know I don't want you to think I'm a little slow. <laughs> Sorry. I know you sent me a link. Like I, I want to send my dues in. And so if you will send me, otherwise I'd be sending it to the Cash App thing that I already have. I was trying to send, but I, I need to know what you want me to do so that I do the right thing. Okay. Um, here, uh, just I'll just put the cash app where you can send it. Thank you. Shakran, brother. Grand Sheik. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. I see it. All right. Got you. Okay. So, um, you. yeah, we're going to go ahead and close out. Happy Holy Day. Happy love. Um, if you have any questions, though, you can just uh, call or, or, or email. All right, everybody. Peace and love.